As locals say goodbye to the last of the snow in northeast China this year, they're busy preparing for the Chinese New Year. The produce for their feasts is all produced locally. The locals collect wild vegetables in the spring, catch fish from the rivers in summer, collect food from the mountains and seas in the autumn, and collect ginseng from the forests in winter. At the Chinese New Year, they enjoy the natural products they've collected over the year in the hope that their good fortune will carry over into the new year. In the kitchen of Tui Huazi, food from every season can be found. In this small snow-covered village, smoke is rarely seen rising from chimneys. But a few days ago, their daughter called her from South Korea to say she'd be home soon for the Chinese New Year. Tui has kept some frozen items gathered from the mountains last spring especially for her daughter to enjoy. The food items found in the Changbai Mountains don't appear until after mid-May. When the mountain forests in front of her house turn green, Dwayne Huaza goes into the woods to collect wild vegetables. The wild mountain vegetables are best picked during the 10 or so days before the start of summer. They grow throughout the virgin forests in the Changbai Mountains during the rainy season. Some are found among the trees and others grow in low-lying valleys. Tui Huaza's favorite is the wild celery found in late spring, which only grows in the forest. Tui Huaza has become very familiar with these wild vegetables through years of experience. Her bamboo basket is well ventilated to keep the collected wild vegetables fresh and protected from direct sunshine. The vegetables are best picked during a period of around 10 days. After that, they tend to be too fibrous. Each year during this short period of time, the locals rush to the mountains to collect them every day. <laughs> Tui Huaza lives in Yaoshui village, some 15 kilometers from Aradaobai He town. The village is located in a valley of the Changbai mountains. Only two families live in the village which has almost no access to the outside world. The Bai River and Yaoshui Spring provide the village with an ample supply of water.
The wild vegetables are rinsed in the river, blanched in boiling water, and then cooled in cold water. They can either be stir-fried or served as a cold dish. Most of the wild vegetables are frozen and saved for later. This thoughtful mother is saving some for her daughter who will be home for the Chinese New Year. Last spring, Danya still couldn't speak, but she's grown a lot over the past year. Danya's mother, Piao Yingji, is scheduled to come home today. Dwei Huaza starts to prepare dinner for her daughter early in the morning. After stuffing a chicken with glutinous rice, jujubes, ginseng and honey, Tui Huaza begins steaming it. It will cook all day and it will be ready in the evening when her daughter arrives. While the chicken is cooking, the wild vegetables are slowly defrosting. As the ice melts, they look as green and fresh as the day they were picked, carrying the fragrance of spring and summer into the next year. During the holiday, there are always people slipping in or out of the kitchen, whether it be some rowdy children or their older relatives. Tui Huaza has worked hard to ensure that this New Year's Eve family dinner is a success. Wild vegetables are hard to preserve, so Piao Yingji can only enjoy them when she comes home for the Chinese New Year. She used to collect these vegetables with her mother, and now she's become a mother herself. Piao Yingji will take her daughter abroad after the Chinese New Year. Dwei Huaza hates to let her granddaughter go, but she's also glad her grandchild will be with her mother. Thanks to Tui Huaza's wild vegetables, the Chinese New Year dinner is deemed a success by the family. There may not have been any expensive foods, but the dinner was a heartwarming experience for the whole family. The forests seem eternal, like the wild vegetables and the people's love for each other. Like 
human affection, good food makes people feel good. During the Chinese New Year holiday, Zhang Qinling's fish restaurant is experiencing a rare period of tranquility. Zhang Qinling began learning how to cook in a small kitchen when he was just 15. He never dreamed that he would one day have such a big kitchen. After working as a chef for 50 years, he's now going to retire to his own kitchen. Following the Chinese New Year, he'll turn over this restaurant to his son, he plans to visit the restaurant occasionally and visit his ancestral home in Shandong province. Hi. Zhang Qinling's fish restaurant is famous around Songhua Lake and it's usually full even in the morning. There are, in fact, many fish restaurants in the town, each with its own features. One reason these restaurants do so well is because the fish they use come from the Songhua River. Zhang Qinling often says that he just wandered into Jilin province when he was 11. As a teenager, the schools of fish in Songhua Lake made a deep impression on him. That The Songhua River runs through the city of Jilin. The dam at the Fungman hydropower station forms a reservoir called Songhua Lake. The shape of the lake is winding and narrow with many branches. It is the largest lake in Jilin province, as well as the largest artificial lake in northeast China. As summer approaches, the Songhua River thaws and the surface of the Wangxi fishing ground is calm. This fishing ground is located in a stream off Songhua Lake and it supplies the local seafood restaurants all year round. Many hard to find fish are bought before they're even caught. So Zhang Qinling's son, Zhang Yanfeng, helps the fishermen haul in their nets so he can be the first to choose from their catch. He's known this lake since childhood, and he's very familiar with what it produces. He's been in charge of purchasing aquatic products for his father's restaurant for more than 10 years. In summer, one haul of a net doesn't yield many fish, but several nets still add up to a varied boatload of fish. Zhang Yangfeng carefully chooses what will be on his father's menu for the day. He finds that this catch is mostly different kinds of carp, all common in the lake. But if he's lucky, he may be able to buy some of the more famous and exotic fish from this lake. These fish are part of the reason for the long success of his father's restaurant. Thank you. 
The restaurant workers have all left for the Chinese New Year vacation. Zhang Qinling is left alone in the kitchen. In the Zhang family, he is the one generally responsible for the holiday dinner. He's bought some fish that are hard to come by at the fishing ground in winter. He usually cooks them for his customers, but now he's preparing them for his family. He's preparing several varieties of special fish native to the Songhua River, including a rare species of Chinese perch. These ferocious perch prey on smaller fish, but their flesh is tender and can be made into a hearty soup after cooking on high heat. Zhang Qinling wraps the white bream in tinfoil and bakes it on stone slabs before adding sauce. Frying before stewing it is also a traditional way of cooking perch in northeastern China. Whitefish is very popular during the Chinese New Year. The people living along the Songhua River traditionally serve fried whitefish at their Chinese New Year dinner, as well as at family dinners during other festivals. Large whitefish are rare in Songhua Lake and were formerly reserved for the Qing royal family. Today, ordinary families steam them in clear broth for the Chinese New Year. Zhang Qinling is making a soup with whitefish balls. The soup for a chef is like an aria for an opera singer. Zhang Qinling adjusts the flame to keep the soup at a low boil so that the fish balls will be ready to serve at the right time. Zhang began preparing his whitefish soup based on a favorite meatball recipe from his home province of Shandong. At first, he only served the soup to other fishermen, but it eventually became a favorite in the restaurant. Zhang Qinling has finished preparing the various types of fish, ensuring that every dish is like a main course for the holiday dinner. The flavor of the fish is very subtle, not too sweet, too tart, too bitter, too spicy or too salty. Songhua Lake not only provides culinary ingredients, but also determines what ingredients people will eat. At a Chinese New Year's Eve dinner, a whole fish is traditionally served as a symbol of surplus. This is because the word for fish sounds like the word for surplus. For this fishing family, the fish dinner brings everyone closer. The fish from the Songhua River is what keeps the fish restaurants in business. The lives of generations of locals have been closely connected with this river that runs through their city. By winter, Jiang Yunzhi has few chickens left. She raises hens for the eggs and roosters for meat during the holiday. Families traditionally serve stewed chicken for their holiday meal. The chickens, which are raised on insects and grain, are in great demand during the holiday. The price of the roosters is high in winter, and you have to order ahead of time to enjoy them in the local restaurants. The small town at the foot of the Changbai Mountains is Lu Shuihe, which in the Manchu language means heavily forested. The region is home to many large and small tree farms, 
including the Hongguang tree farm, where Jiang Yunzhi lives. After the government imposed a ban on logging in the area, the tree farms no longer hum with the sounds of falling timber. Most of the people have moved to the town, leaving a few stragglers like Jiang Yunzhi behind. During this year's holiday, her husband is the only person left to celebrate the festival with her. Before the holiday, there isn't much to do around the house. Jiang has to prepare the dried wild mushrooms, one of the most common ingredients in rural cuisine in northeast China. The mushrooms are collected from the mountain range near the village. The locals have a close relationship with the Changbai Mountains. Even unattractive mountain forests may produce good ingredients. September is still days away, but the weather has turned cold ahead of time. For this region, the autumn is always substantially busier than spring, as this is when all the locals are busy in the forest, collecting ingredients. Men climb tall trees to pick pine cones. They hit the branches with poles to knock the mature pine cones to the ground. To protect the forests, the official season for collecting pine cones is limited. The collectors must be both brave and skillful. Moving between branches, they usually collect pine cones from several trees, moving around like tree climbing monkeys. When he was young, Bo Xiaobin was well known locally as a skilled climber. But now that he's older, he can only collect materials from the ground with his wife. However, there's a rich variety of things that can be collected from the ground. In autumn, there are usually wild mushrooms beneath the pine trees, though the quantity depends on temperature and rainfall. Now that the trees cannot be harvested, the treasure they provide has changed from timber to edible products. It's taken them just a few hours to collect half a bag of the pine-scented mushrooms. Jiang Yunzhi has to dry the mushrooms they collected as soon as possible while the sunny weather holds to keep them from rotting. The dried mushrooms are one-eighth the size of the fresh ones. Hazel mushrooms can only be collected during a 10-day period in autumn. A family can only collect a maximum of 300 kilos of fresh mushrooms a year. If she can't sell them out, Jiang Yunzhi will give them to relatives and friends as Chinese New Year gifts. Soon after the mushrooms have dried in the sun, the weather turns cold with the arrival of the long winter, when temperatures can fall as low as minus 30 degrees Celsius. The moisture in the air can turn to ice particles, and the air pressure is so low that kitchen fumes can't be released into the air.
姐，够不够？够了，靠嘴胖子。他扫啥了？这毛挺干净了。不行，今天咱服务员来，你必须得好好的整干净的。这这挺干净的，来吧，还是我来，啊、我洗吧。你来，我洗的怎么也能比你洗的干净点。来来来，我整还行。嗯，够了够了够了。哎、Stewed chicken with mushrooms is a popular dish for families in northeast China, and Jiang Yunzhi is preparing the dish for the Chinese New Year's Eve dinner. The chicken can't be too old or too young. They taste best. At around seven months, the chicken absorbs the flavor of the mushrooms and gives the dish the flavor of the mountains. People in the villages have simple tastes. They hold simple dinners to celebrate the Chinese New Year. Since they moved to the town, Jiang Yunzhi's daughter and her family rarely return to the mountain to collect edible plants and fungus. She has to return to her parents' home to enjoy stewed chicken with mushrooms. Jiang Yunzhi's son-in-law is very familiar with this dish. He remembers. But his future mother-in-law served stewed chicken with mushrooms when he visited his future wife at her home. The adults often give the drumsticks to the children, a common childhood memory for people from northeast China. The carefully raised chickens and the hazel mushrooms collected in autumn go into a delicious dish for forest-dwelling families during the holiday. Stewed chicken with mushrooms is a trademark family dish for the Chinese New Year's Eve dinner. Sharing this dish as a family to mark the holiday brings everyone closer together. Although it's late in the year, it still often rains along the shoreline in Dunggang. Miao Nai Fu decorates his fishing boat to celebrate the Chinese New Year. Miao Nai Fu took over this boat from his parents before he was 20 years old, and now he's 30. He's never had an incident at sea, and he's done well catching fish and shrimp. Every Chinese New Year. He decorates his boat and makes the same wish. During the off-season, activity at the busy port grinds to a halt for four months. During this time, Fishermen only occasionally go to their boats, and then only for cleaning and repair, unlike most of the year when they work day and night on their boats. Many generations of Chinese fishermen have lived on the sea. Their difficult life is completely different to life on land. Miao Naifu has been going to the sea every morning since the start of autumn. As most aquatic products are abundant in autumn, it's the busy season for fishermen. Even though the sun has only just risen, Miao Naifu is running a little late. Small boats must return to shore the same day to ensure that their catch is as fresh as possible. For this reason, most fishermen start out at 2 or 3 a.m.
The Yellow Sea runs from the southernmost end of the Shandong Peninsula to the estuary of the Yangtze River. The southern part of the Yellow Sea is rich in fish. The part north of 35.3 degrees north with an area of 4,000 square kilometers only experiences weak and infrequent ocean currents and it's rich in shrimp, crabs and shellfish. Spring and autumn are both good fishing seasons here. Mr. Miao became captain of this ship when he was just 20. Over the past 10 years, the sea has helped him make enough income to support his family and employ two helpers. These helpers are actually his partners. They all invest and share in the returns. But as ship owner, Mr. Miao's share is the largest. The sea is full of surprises that can test the patience of the fishermen. They work from morning to evening, but only haul in their nets once every several hours. Crabs are frequently hauled in and eaten raw. Fishermen who live by the sea learn to eat raw seafood when they're young. As Mr. Miao begins fishing, seagulls gather around the ship. Many fishermen believe that attracting a lot of seagulls is an indication of a large catch. As the boat moves, the huge net collects fish. After hauling in the net several times, the ship becomes filled with seafood. Catches in the autumn are prawns, mantis shrimp, and crabs from the waters of Dunggang. The other varieties are sorted according to type and size. Any undersized fish are returned to the sea. As older fishermen retire from fishing, many customs change, but the tradition of throwing back undersized fish is still observed by the younger fishermen. makes it chilly in the evening, but people are waiting at the port for the ships to return to shore. The fresh seafood brings a good price, and the fishermen continue to work like this until winter. After decorating his boat for Chinese New Year, Miao Naifu chats with his friends while his mother and wife prepare dinner. The sea has always produced food for people. The fish will be part of people's holiday dinner, since fish represents peace and prosperity for the year ahead.
stewed fish has long been a staple for the Chinese New Year's Eve dinner. In addition, the menu often includes prawns, crabs, shrimp and eggs, snails, Chinese cabbages and pork dumplings, all prepared according to local tradition. Miao Naifu's mother has also prepared manta shrimp especially for him. These popular northeastern dishes may look simple, but they embody understanding, love and care in the family. Following the short spring on the coast, Miao Naifu will be going out to sea to fish. During the year, he can't spend much time with his family, so the holiday is an important time for him. The fish for the family dinner all came from the sea, and they retain the taste of the sea. The Chinese New Year provides a valuable opportunity for fishermen to be with their families. In spite of the winter cold, everyone in the village goes to town to buy ingredients for their holiday dinner. Meanwhile, Tui Chang An and his friends are going into the frozen mountain forest to look for the ginseng they spotted during the summer. The people of the Changbai Mountains don't customarily collect ginseng in winter. Long ago, only poor people took the risk of collecting ginseng in the mountains in winter, and it didn't sell for a good price. But Tui Chang An is a ginseng expert, and he believes that finding ginseng during the Chinese New Year will bring good luck in the coming year. When he was young, Tui Chang An grew ginseng for a living. He has a lot of experience with it. In his 50s, he took over as the town's new ginseng expert. There are, in fact, many such experts in the villages at the foot of the Changbai Mountains. Thanks to these experts and the miraculous forest, the traditional ginseng trade still continues. The lives of these experts are closely tied to the mountains and the forests, and they observe the traditional rules and restrictions for collecting ginseng in the forests. The best season for collecting ginseng is at the beginning of summer, after it rains. The dense and humid forests are filled with the fragrance of ginseng. Tui Chang An and the others walk into the mountains sticks in hand. Each works independently and becomes invisible when bending over. Because of this, they occasionally hit their sticks against the trees to tell the others where they are.
The search turns up nothing all morning. Dwei Chang An decides that they should stop for lunch. It's not uncommon to find nothing for several days, so they've brought plenty of food with them, including meat and alcohol. They carry much better food than people did in the past. When the ginseng expert calls the others, it definitely means he found something. Everyone who hears his call responds by shouting in a jargon that's unique among ginseng collectors. Any ginseng found must be dug out by the ginseng expert. A deer bone tool is used to dig around the ginseng roots one by one until all the earth around them is cleared away. It's a painstaking process but the completeness of the route affects its price. Winter in Fulsong County often sees temperatures as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius, freezing nearly everything in the vast forest. But the four distinct seasons are good for ginseng. Dwei Chang'an is lucky. He's found some ginseng in the frozen earth covered by snow, and this is a good sign. No matter how cold it gets, they observe one strict rule. Where there are several ginseng plants growing in close proximity, only the largest can be taken. They're extremely careful in digging out the ginseng, showing that they know what they're doing and following the rules. Like many others in town, Tui Chang'an uses the ginseng collected before the Chinese New Year to make a kind of liquor. The ginseng must be carefully washed to remove all the dirt, which could affect the taste of the liquor. Aging the ginseng liquor until the holiday improves the taste. People drink it during the holiday because it gives people a warm and healthy glow. Ginseng is a miraculous treasure from the mountains that's a healthy ingredient in a number of dishes. For the Chinese New Year holiday, Mr. Tui generally fixes stewed chicken with ginseng. Mountain ginseng is a little bitter, but the family eats it more for their health than for the taste. Farm-grown ginseng is not that expensive. Mr. Tui's wife cuts the ginseng into large pieces before frying them and coating them with sugar. The people of northeast China were always very skilled at making candied sweet potatoes, but they gradually replaced them with candied ginseng. This dish requires a great deal of time, sugar and oil, so Mr. Tui's wife only makes it for her daughter for the Chinese New Year. Her daughter's already 30, but she still asks her mother to use plenty of sugar, just like she did when she was a child. For many people, more sugar means more happiness. Sugar. 
，反正年年，反正你爸年年都收入还行，都挺好的。So Wei Chang'an begins to worship the god of mountains before he finishes eating. This is something he does every year. He considers it to be just as important as the holiday dinner itself. Mr. Tuei's ginseng business did well enough to support his family this year, which he finds to be supremely satisfying. The Chinese New Year holidays form a record of people living off the bounty of the mountains and the sea. The food items from the mountain forests and the sea are harvested carefully by the people as they have done for generations. Nature produces such resources in every season, and the people share them with each other during the Chinese New Year holiday.